You're watching Cartel TV and I'm Amelia. Back in a time when we could travel, I remember going to France and Peugeots and Citroëns were a dime a dozen. Here, they're definitely growing in popularity, but they're still a pretty unique find on the road. So they're good for those drivers who want to turn some heads as they're going along. And turn heads they will. One thing the French manufacturers Peugeot and Citroën never lacked was uniqueness and flair. Their cars look like they have a character of their own, and their appearance alone was often enough to create an iconic car. Sure, they are far, far more common in Europe than anywhere else, but hey, we don't mind some uniqueness and flair here either. The model I have here is the fresh facelift of the Peugeot 3008 GT Sport Trim, which is the highest level of the three available. Full disclosure, I recently also bought the 3008 in the Allure Trim, so I'll be drawing upon my experience with that throughout the review as well. First, the exterior design. Now, remember that uniqueness and flair? I mean, just look at it. If at first sight you don't think it's that much different from the current offer, here are some of the European competitors. Here's a VW Tiguan and this is a Skoda Karok. It's significantly different, right? Even if we go well up the price ladder. We get models like the Mercedes GLC or the BMW X3. Yes, they look good, but A, they are a lot more expensive, and B, they have their own unique styling that seems to target a different set of buyers. I mean, they do draw attention, but for different reasons. If I had to find something as flary, I'd have to go to Asia for something like the latest Tucson, for example. And the 3008 is not cheap, especially at this trim. The front is the most recognisable part with this amazing combination of headlights and grille. I personally love it. These elongated upright things under the headlights are turn signals. And look at how weird the wipers are placed in the most upright position. With these French cars, you never quite know if that's just a unique styling feature or if it has an actual practical purpose. When you experience a new car for the first time, it's a bit of a getting to know you process. Look, anything can suddenly start blinking, a camera may appear, or in this case, it's the weirdest looking boot unlock button you've ever seen. And something that's a little bit quirky about this one is you have to push the buttons really hard, like the stop start button and the boot button. The lower section of the front is less in your face. It's a bit angular and sharp, but that's about it. And that is a good thing because you just do not want it detracting from these headlights and grille. The side is also a bit sharper with a bunch of smaller creases, cladding around the wheel arches, hugging these 19 inch wheels on this trim. The two lower trims, including mine, have 18 inch wheels, but they look pretty damn awesome too. That flare is not turned off in lower trims. There are three engine options. A 1.6 pure tech turbo petrol with 121 kilowatts and 240 newton meters can be spec'd in Allure and GT. The GT also has a two liter blue HDI diesel option with 131 kilowatts and 400 newton meters. The very top GT Sport is the only one that gets a 1.6 turbo petrol with 133 kilowatts and 250 newton meters. Basically a more powerful version of the engine in the Allure. Yep, the difference between the less and more powerful petrol options is very small but the main difference is in the gearbox. In the lesser model you get a six-speed automatic and here you have the latest eight-speed option and the difference is noticeable. A hybrid is hinted at and look if I wasn't so impatient I probably would have held out for that one but I just wanted to drive one out the door. However, I am really excited to see what that drives like when it arrives. All petrol engines get the max torque at around 1500 revs, so that makes driving any of them pretty easy. The diesel gets top torque at 2000 revs, but with so much, there's actually a lot of it in the lower revs as well. Actually, more than in the petrols. While the diesel is definitely the more confident option when it comes to push, the petrol is definitely the top choice in this trim level. It is just so wonderfully smooth less harsh than the diesel and powerful enough. Yes, you do notice the added torque of the diesel, but this one is very responsive. It's really quick off the mark and super smooth. It has all the power you need in a vehicle like this one and it's more relaxed. Look, this one does have a few extra kilowatts and yes, you do notice it now and then, but for my purposes, the Allure is perfectly adequate. Thank you very much. Handling is also okay for this class. It's not to be thrown around like a sports car, but it's agile enough. The suspension is geared towards comfort, which is something that French models are quite famous for, but not so badly that it feels uncomfortable to drive. Official fuel consumption for this engine is 5.6 litres combined. I've been doing mostly city driving with a little bit of motorway, but that's 
probably how most drivers will use the 3008. So you'll be pleased to know that I enjoyed averages of around 7.3 to 7.8 litres in these conditions. While talking about the weird things, I mentioned wiper position when upright. Now, I haven't had the chance to test the European model, but I believe that this feature is a carryover from left-hand drive markets. I have to say it is a little bit strange having the wipers come this way in front of the driver. It definitely feels like it was built for a European model where the wheel is on that side of the car. I mean, it's not a huge issue. It certainly doesn't prevent you from seeing the road, but it's just a bit strange. The rear window is also pretty small, which is pretty standard for this class. I'll give it a pass because it is quite common and it helps with the cool styling and you get the camera. On the inside, it does help that this is the top trim as it adds that extra bit of class, but the overall design is just awesome. Just look at this steering wheel. Or the separated central console with the gear shifter and these really cool buttons. The 12.3 inch digital instrument cluster is high res and placed above the steering wheel. Also something that's not common. And this section in front of the passenger is simple, but it works like a charm with the central console. The one thing that does kind of let it down a little bit is this infotainment screen. Yes, it's a good screen, perfectly placed, decently sized at 10 inch. It's got all the standard bells and whistles and connectivity options, but it just looks like it's from any other vehicle. With so much innovation, I just would have hoped for a slightly more incorporated solution because that's the styling standard that Peugeot demands. There is one gripe with the infotainment system, and that's the resolution of the reversing camera. It's just not at the level of the rest of the system. I mean, it does its job well, but it kind of spoils the otherwise near perfect interior experience. The top trim gets bonus perks like these Nappa leather seats with massage function for the driver, an optional but well worth it panoramic sunroof, leather flat top and bottom steering wheel, lime wood trim, a 10 speaker Focal premium sound system. It just looks and feels so beautifully graceful. And yes, I would say premium. It even has a really decadent massage function. Oh, now all I need is some French champagne and a lovely French man spring sweet nothings into my ear. Storage up front is also quite nice. First of all, this storage bin under the armrest is very deep. Like you can definitely put some seriously large things in here, no issue. Cup holders are in front of it, bottle holders are in the doors, and there's a tray for your phone in front of the gearbox shifter with wireless charging and, of course, a glove box. Remembering the practically compact dimensions of the 3008, the rear is actually pretty accommodating. Even with the panoramic sunroof that goes all the way back, headroom is ample and legroom is pretty good too. If you are a taller adult, I would like to think that longer journeys aren't going to be too bad back here. Common amenities are present here. You get charging points, rear air vents, these little pockets, a fancy armrest with cup holders, bottle holders. It's basically luxury. I do fit a baby seat in the back of mine. Now it's for toddlers one to four and my young Archie approves of the back seats. The boot is also really great for this segment with 591 litres of space. And look, the boot size was actually the clincher in us getting this particular car. Fold the second row and fill it to the roof and you get up to 1,670 litres of space. It's really nice. Moreover, the opening is wide and the load lip is small, meaning that it's really easy to load in bulky items, which I need to often, like prams and suitcases and expensive handbags. It is also safe, as expected for a premium car that was just refreshed. Just some of the features include ABS and EBD, blind spot detection, emergency braking, ESP, speed limit recognition, advanced driver attention alert, distance warning, lane keep assist, lane departure warning, road edge detection, autonomous emergency brake, high beam assist, front and rear parking sensors, 360 camera, semi-autonomous parking assist, adaptive cruise control, and ISO fix on outer rear seats. Ready for some really good news? All of these things come standard across the range. I mean, the two upper trims add lane positioning assist, but that's it. Drive away for the 3008 starts at just under 50K for the Allure, or repayments as little as 125 a week. And for this top GT Sport, the drive away price is 59,830, or repayments of 211.77 a week. Now do make sure you head over to Ausloans online for an obligation free quote on this car or any other car you fancy really. They use the latest tech that instantly gets you the best price from over 40 lenders. It saves you shopping or even worse, settling for the best loan rates online. We have a link below in the description that takes you straight to our partner page. So what's my verdict on the Peugeot 3008? Honestly, it is a great offering in this segment. I mean, of all the cars I've reviewed, this is the one I went with. 
It's a great alternative for people who want a premium car, which this is one, but also want something that stands out from the standard crowd. In Europe, it's a really common sight, but here, it's a bit more of a exotic. And a lot of buyers looking for a stylish SUV of this size will enjoy a bit of uniqueness. Other than that, the 3008 offers a good ride, great interior quality and practicality. It really is a brilliant car in its class and it really deserves better sales than the pre-facelift model had. However, the premium quality also commands a similar price. That puts it up against the likes of the Volvo XC40, for example. And that one, well, that's a tough competitor. Is it better? Well, for the features and price point, I clearly thought so. Just don't dismiss it because it's a rare sight here. It may surprise you. Thanks for watching Cartel TV. Remember to follow us on our socials for more great content. And you might even catch some photos of me driving my own brand new 3008. And if you are needing car financing, make sure to check out Oz Loans just on the link below. We are so excited to be partnering with them because they are an amazing solution to financing your next new car. See you next time.